Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dakota with According to Hoyle. Today we are going to be breaking down to the basics, the need to know on camera lenses. With that being said, make sure to like this video and subscribe to According to Hoyle to stay up to date on our latest videos. Without further ado, see you on the other side of the intro. On the equipment side of things, arguably one of your biggest assets will be the types and quality of lenses you have available to you. Depending on if you're filming a real estate virtual tour or a safari in Africa, the types of lenses you use in each job will be vastly different. But before we jump into all that crazy, let's talk about the two main attributes of your lenses. That is focal length and f-stop. Focal length is how wide your lens can go, for example, a 10 millimeter focal length is extremely wide and is most commonly used in real estate virtual tours. This wide angle type lens gives extremely wide shots and will make rooms look very, very ridiculously large. There are some downsides to wide angles where you can get what's called the barrel effect, which causes your straight lines in your shot to kind of curve and become distorted. On the opposite side of wide angle, you have what you call your telephoto lenses uh, at, that start at around 100 millimeter, 200 millimeter, all the way up three, four, 500, 600 millimeter. These lenses allow you to zoom in from vast distances onto your target. For example, you ever watch a documentary of the African safari and wonder exactly how did the photographer get that close to the lions? Well, spoil alert. To burst your bubble, the photographer wasn't up close and personal. Most likely, they were a ways off using a telescopic zoom lens to get those close-up shots that you're all familiar with. Now listen, I've seen a lot of people that only focus on how well a camera lens zooms in and out. And they think that because the camera can zoom in from like eight miles away up close and personal to their object, that that's the best lens in the world to use for everything and they're totally wrong there is a reason why you don't use a hammer to chop down a tree same thing with camera lenses there's different tools for different jobs so just keep that in mind for example if you're doing interior shots of a house you wouldn't be using a telephoto lens you would be using a wide angle roughly 10, 12 millimeter, adjust it way down, get the full scope of the scene and everything like that. You want to pull in as much detail from the room as possible and really give the people watching your video, watching that home, an accurate representation of what they would see if they were there. On the flip side of that, if you're filming the African safari or you were filming a basketball game or a football game where you can't get up close and personal to the players on the field, you would be using a telephoto lens. You wouldn't be surprised if you're pushing two, 300, 400 mil up close and personal from far away to get those candid shots of the most valuable shot of the game, the winning score, or the lion, uh, you know, chasing around its cubs or laying in the sun. You don't want to get up close and personal. You'd be using ridiculously telephoto lenses for those shots. So it, it, you want to use a wide angle. So just keep that in mind. There's a different lens for every single type of job you want to use. Okay, now that you know that focal length is how much a lens can zoom in and out, now let's talk about f-stop. You might remember f-stop from a previous video and that f-stop is what we call aperture. And aperture is how open the eye of a lens can be. For example, a camera with an f-stop of 1.4 is going to be able to give you a brighter image with a more blurred background than if you had your camera lens set to an f-stop of 32. And again, remember that the lower the f-stop, the less depth of field you're going to have, which means your background will be blurred. In the real world, for example, an f-stop of 1.4 you're using for portraits and stuff like that. My camera, for example, I'm using a wide angle lens at a 12 millimeter cropped, and we'll talk about what cropped is later on. And I'm pushing actually around an f-stop of a five, which in my opinion is actually 
closed, I should actually drop it down to a four or even a three. But if I drop the focal length down even out, you're going to see a bunch of junk in the shot, like lights and stuff like that. And I don't want that. On the opposite side, you're shooting landscape. You want a high aperture f-stop of like a 32, so you have your foreground and your background all in focus. Okay, now you understand the two categories. You have focal length, you have f-stop, and that is how the lenses are categorized. Now, they're also categorized on the quality of build, but I'm not going to go too crazy into that because that just gets ridiculous with the different types of motors and everything else. But just giving you a brief skim on how those work. Pretty much more expensive the lens, like the Canon L series, the lens is going to give you less distortion in your shots. Now, I'm going to be honest. Every lens will give you some type of distortion. That's a fact of law. Now, you can change most of the issues in post-production. Um, L series lenses for Canon, for example, are going to give you better images, crisp clear, uh, less issues than say a kit lens that came with your camera. It's just, you're spending more money for it. You also get awesome features like weatherproofing. So you don't have to worry about your lens fogging up and stuff like that. And they're more, uh, they're more rugged. If that makes sense. Like they're less likely to break or wear down over time, but that's about it. We're not going to go any crazier into expensive lenses and stuff like that. I mean, there's people that do bird photography that spend fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on a camera lens. So, I mean, it's, trust me, if you have money to spend, they have a camera lens that you can buy for that price. It's crazy. However, if you do want to go into more details on the different ca uh, camera lenses like that, honestly, go on the internet. There's 85 billion different videos reviewing the different types of lenses and why you should buy it or why you shouldn't. I'm not going to waste your time. You can go find those videos if you want. Anyways, back to lenses and how they look and they work. When you're looking at your lens, you're going to have two rings on that lens. The first one that's closest to the edge where the eye is, not the part that's attached to the camera bait body, is your focus ring. When you move this left and right, your camera will focus, or sorry, your lens will focus on whatever your object wants to be. Now, that's awesome if you have somebody what's called pulling focus for you. Their job is to make sure whatever you want in your scene to be in focus stays in focus. In my case and a lot of um, other people that are on YouTube, stuff like that, we don't have the time, we don't have the money to have other people, a camera crew, pull focus, sound for us, and we have to fly solo a lot of the times. So in my case, I did my research, I went with Canon, Canon's uh, newer camera series like the 90D, so on and so forth, have an awesome autofocus that's actually a two stage and that allows the, me not have to, to pay somebody to pull focus for me. In the case with my camera that I'm using now, I can move left and right, forward, backwards, all this other stuff, and I will constantly stay in focus. Um, Canons are just, that's one of the main features that they're known for. Their ISO stuff isn't the best shooting at night. It is what it is. Sony in some aspects are uh, better. Sony doesn't have as well as an autofocus system as Canon in my opinion. However, the autofocus that I'm using locks onto my face. So I move, I stay in focus. There are downsides to that though. If I have a bunch of people behind me, I stay in focus. They're all blurred out. There's other options though set a point on my camera and the camera automatically keeps that area of the screen in focus but if I move out of the area I go out of focus so there's a lot of different tips and tricks so if you're like buying a camera for example I'm getting off topic here if you're buying a camera for example and you know you're going to film solo make sure it has a good autofocus system it will make your life a little bit easier okay I digress, shameless plug on the Canon 90D and the newer cameras from Canon. Okay, so the first ring on the far side, focusing. Okay, so now the second ring that is closer towards the camera body and it has a bunch of numbers next to it. That is the ring that adjusts your focal length. And you're probably noticing a bunch of weird numbers next to it, and that's fine. When you adjust the ring, you're going to see that your camera lens actually moves in and out and kind of like gets longer and shorter and stuff like that. You're also going to see those numbers move. 
when those numbers or a number matches up with a white line, that line is telling you what focal length the lens is at. For example, an 18 millimeter wide angle, or in the case of if it's a variable lens and not a fixed prime lens, it could be 55 millimeters. So what that's telling you is a camera that's variable can move and zoom from 18 at its widest to 55 mil at its most zoomed in. Uh, quickly, prime lenses are lenses that are fixed at 55 millimeter at an aperture of 1.4. Those are fixed prime lenses and that means you can't adjust anything. It's uh, in the case of the 18, to 18 millimeter to 55 millimeter kit lens that came with my 90D that I'm actually not using right now, the f-stop also changes so it's a variable. It can change from a 3.5 aperture at 18 millimeters all the way up to a minimum of 5.6 at 55. Now, you can get cameras that zoom in closer, like your telephoto lenses that have a ridiculously low aperture number. That's fine. You're going to spend a bunch of money. I mean, I've seen camera lenses that are 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars and stuff like that. Like I said before, you have money to spend. There's a camera lens out there for you. So just keep that in mind. If you want a higher quality lens that can keep the aperture um, really, really, really open, the eye really open at zoom distances, you're going to pay for it. Okay, so now that you know the basics on lenses, focal length, and f-stop, there is one catch to this that I mentioned earlier in the video, and that's called, you might have heard me say it, crop sensors. Okay, so we're talking about focal lengths. Focal lengths is, you know, uh, the camera lens being able to zoom in and out, right? Those numbers that are on the lens are true if you are taking photos or filming on what's called a full frame camera body, 35 millimeter. What I mean is if you attach that lens to a full frame at 55 millimeter, the shot you take will be correct. I know you're probably wondering yourself, wait a second, any camera you take of a shot is correct. Well, kind of. You have a full frame at 35 millimeter. You also have what's called a crop sensor camera. What this means is that the sensor is actually not full frame. It's smaller. Uh, each company kind of calls it its own thing. Canon, for example, calls their crop sensors uh, like the 90D, the uh, the Rebel series, you know, the T7i, so on and so forth. They call those APS-C sensors, APS-C sensors, such as in the 90D. They have what's called a crop of 1.6. What this means to you is that if you're taking a photo side by side at the same 55 millimeter, like I'm going to show you the image on the screen, 55 millimeter on an APS-C crop of 1.6 in a full frame. The camera that's full frame, the photo that's coming from that full frame camera is going to be 1.6 times bigger than your APS-C. You're going to get 1.6 times more of the image, in this case of the dock, in your photo. It's not that big of a deal. It's simple math. And I'm going to teach you how to do the simple math and how you can um, uh, multiply or divide across so you can make sure that you're able to communicate effectively with other professionals. Okay, so going back to the document that you see on your screen. If we were to take the photo at 55 millimeters on the APS-C camera body, which is a 1.6 crop rate, if you were to take that same photo on a full frame, you would actually need to adjust the focal length on the full frame camera lens by 1.6 to make sure the images came out exactly the same. So to do that, your APS-C is at a 55 millimeter. You need to times 55 millimeter by 1.6. 55 times 1.6 is roughly 88 millimeters. So again, if you want to take the same exact photo as you see on your APS-C, you would actually have to take that photo with your full frame camera with your focal length as, as an 88 millimeters. Now you guys are probably wondering like, wait a second, why does this matter? Well, 
I'll tell you guys this. I'm trying to save you money. Most of the time, when you're watching videos or reading books on photography or anything like that, the writer, the speaker, the professional assumes that you are using full frame lenses. And when they start suggesting ling uh, lens lengths and what to buy, they assume that you have a full frame camera. I'm saying this a bunch of times so you guys pay attention. They assume that you have a full frame camera, which is the professional camera style. And they suggest a lens for you to buy. Well, if you go out and buy that lens on Amazon or wherever, it's not going to give you the same results on your APS-C camera body. Because you have, you have a crop of 1.6. So, for example, they tell you, hey, get the nifty 50, 55 millimeter at 1.4. <clears throat> Great if you have a full frame camera. However, if you don't, that 50 millimeter camera lens on your APS-C will be the equivalent of a full frame camera with a focal length of on its lens of around 80. So keep that in mind. So now you think you're shooting with a 50 millimeter, but in theory, if it was full frame like all the other professionals, you're closer to 70, 80 millimeters focal length. So just keep that in mind. That's why you need to make sure you know how to multiply this stuff out when you're buying your camera lenses. You could end up wasting a ton of money and buying the wrong stuff, and then you're all freaked out and frustrated. <clears throat> so let's make sure you guys are getting the math down, and we're going to play a couple of games. I'm going to give you a couple of math problems, so get out that pen, paper, and all that fun stuff. So if you've ever played the basketball game horse, you're already ahead of everybody else. So if you haven't played the game horse before in basketball, pretty much you have two or three people. One person picks a location on the basketball court and makes the shot. The next person has to stand in the exact same spot. And if they make that shot, they then don't get points at it and they take the next shot. If you miss, you get the letter H. You miss again. O. Miss again. R. S. E. Okay. Spells out horse. If you get all of them wrong and you spell out the word horse, you lose the game. You can do this in photography. So here we go. You have a friend. You are on an APS-C Canon 90D. Your buddy has a full frame Canon 1DX. And you guys are going to play horse. So first off, your friend takes a photo. His focal length on his camera lens is 300 millimeters. For you to recreate that same exact image on your APS-C frame, what focal length will you need to have your camera lens set at? I'll give you 10 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. If you got 187.5 millimeters, you would be correct. Because we know that his frame is 1.6 times larger than ours or yours, we need to divide his focal length to get the equivalent on our smaller sensor. Okay, so one more. Your shot is of an interior of a living room. You set your focal length to 12 millimeters at an f-stop of 1.4. For your friend to recreate this on his full frame 1DX, what should his camera lens settings be? I'll give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. If you got roughly 19.2 millimeters at an f-stop of 1.4, you are correct. Remember guys, the only thing that changes with sensor size is your focal length. So keep that in mind. Your f-stop, you don't have to multiply or divide with. I just threw that in there to mess with you guys. Okay, so that's all for this basics on camera lenses. Till next time, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our next videos. Without further ado, see you next time.